At Harvard, I worked on my PhD, which dealt with US nuclear weapons policy after the Cold War, and why so little had changed as the global threat level eased. I interviewed 70 people, including people in the White House and in the Pentagon. I had regular contact with professors who had been political appointees in the Clinton administration and later on in the Obama administration. They have remained important contacts in my professional life. And I have no doubt that my two years stay at Harvard, thanks to a Rotary Scholarship, helped me become a professor at the University of Antwerp. Thank you. Each year I am surprised how many students, Belgian and foreigners, like to follow my nuclear weapons arms control seminar. And my students do not understand why there are still 15,000 nuclear weapons on Earth, while the few nuclear weapon states had promised in an international treaty more than 50 years ago to get rid of these nuclear weapons. Each of those weapons is on average 30 times more powerful than the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombs that devastated those cities. We are lucky that nuclear weapons have not been used since then. But luck cannot hold forever. On average, every eight years, another state acquires nuclear weapons. Today, there is a new risk of a nuclear arms race in the Middle East. Terrorist organizations have shown interest. My conclusion, after having studied thoroughly, is that the only realistic way to prevent the use of these weapons is to eliminate them. Not only... <laughs> to eliminate them. Not only North Korea but also the United States, China, Russia, and so on. It won't be easy. It won't be for tomorrow. But let's aim at 2045, 100 years after Hiroshima, and start now. In 2017, two years ago, 122 states, that means two-thirds of all states in the world, have negotiated a treaty to prohibit, to ban nuclear weapons, just like chemical and biological weapons have been banned. I urge the nine nuclear armed states and their allies, including my own country, to take the concerns of the rest of the world very seriously. If not, the whole non-proliferation regime may crumble. Recently, I was proud to help convince the biggest Belgian bank to divest from nuclear weapons-related business. Customers and employees care about how their money is invested, and sometimes CEOs do as well. They do not want to see their own money being invested in weapon systems that are regarded as immoral, inhumane, and in the foreseeable future, in all likelihood, illegal. Throughout my academic career, I have not limited myself to writing academic journal articles. Each of us, including you, has to make up his or her mind about issues of war and peace, including nuclear weapons, climate change, and the environment. These issues cannot be left solely to experts, diplomats, and politicians. If politicians feel that people care, they will be more eager to change the policy for the better. And so I make my voice heard whenever I can. So let us try to make the world a better place, each of us starting at home. Thank you, Rotary.